Hello, Sven. How are you? It's Frank DeFreitas. Yes, I'm all right. I'm glad I was able to get the number and get you in there. I know it's getting late there where you are now, and you probably want to get home for the weekend. Oh, it's no problem. I work very late, so I start early. Uh, not very early, so I work late. I, I work late, too. I, I got the last show up last night around midnight, so uh, okay. it's good to do another one with you today, and I'm glad we finally have a chance to talk. I've visited your website many times. I'm very impressed with the work that you're doing with holography, especially with uh, full color. Yes. Uh, well, uh, How did that come about? Oh, well, I started very early with it, but only with two colors. So, But now uh, I have a good uh, setup, and uh, we make uh, about uh, 400 color holograms each year f with the students. Mm -hmm. Small size. Uh, the ones you have on your website, they look like they're probably 8x10s or larger. Yeah, 8x10. Eight 8x10, by ten. Eight by ten, all of them. Now, so uh, that's a maximum. Well, I've tried a larger one, but um, the setup is too small for, uh, for uh, very big holograms. What are you using, like a 4x8 a Newport table there? Uh, it's a stone table, in fact. Oh, no kidding. Isn't that something? That's beautiful work, too. Now, you're using all gas lasers with that, I presume. Yeah, I have an argon. No, not an argon. A helium a cadmium laser. Mm -hmm. I have a diode pump jug laser and a helium neon laser. Now, the course that you run there, what type of students take that course? Uh, well, I, I have several uh, electric and engineering and... Uh, uh, well, the different, uh, uh, well, we have had also engineering uh, physics, and so that is the kind of uh, students. And I have also a special course for uh, holographers, or people specially interested in holography. Yes, I, I would assume that the course runs as a... Um a separate course to the physics and electrical engineering course, but also as a uh, primary course for the students who would wish to take uh, holography as their primary study? Yeah, that's uh, something like that. Well, um, I mean, most of the holograms are made with uh, uh, with uh, engineering physics or uh, uh, su such type of uh, students, but uh, I have a, a, a small group that's especially interested in, in holography. Yeah. And so they make different kinds of holograms, like rainbow holograms and, and uh, color and, and ordinary uh, holograms, like uh, transmission holograms and reflection holograms in one color. Now, would your students, once they've completed this course and they've received their degree, would they then go out into the workforce? Yes, would they then go to try and get jobs doing holography in your country? Well, in, in our country, our country is, isn't very big. <laughs> uh, the number of pupils, uh, the, uh, the number of persons in Sweden is uh, 8 million, so so it's not very easy to, to find a job in holography here. Yeah. Now, how long have you been involved with holography, and how did you get started? Well, I was interested uh, in holography already. In, I started in 68, 69. And, uh, well, I, I, I was interested in stereoscopy and photography and so on. So uh, I tried to make, uh, in fact, a film in, in three dimensions and such things. So I, I, I was amazed by the pictures uh, and the holographic pictures so I, I, tr I started very early. Was it very difficult getting the uh, university to set up a holography lab or were they very willing to do that? Well uh, uh, well uh, it, it was it was not very uh, not very difficult to, to get a lab like this yeah. In the beginning, and then uh, 
then we expanded a bit to then so now I have in fact uh, two large tables and one small and uh, uh, we working in three separate rooms and we have a lab nearby so it's a very nice I, I, th I think that it would be good if I could have uh, international students to to use the lab more uh, I think it's uh, it would be nice would I try I have had some some international students would the lab be open for people to rent the studio to do work in it uh, I I uh, I don't think it's uh, yeah, well. It's possible to to do that. Maybe yeah. yes. Why don't you tell a little a little bit about the university itself? This uh, is Lund Lund University. Yes, uh, Lund University. We have a technical part, and we have uh, another. We have two parts. So, so one is uh, just in in technical. Mm -hmm. the technical faculty. Yeah. Yeah. And the plates you're using are are, are they they're called Ultima plates, right? Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. And how how's the response of those plates? The response. Yeah. As uh, far as your exposure times working yeah, with them. The, the, it's. Uh, I mean, uh, in fact, uh, I think th there was a reduction in the time of. Three to four compared to Russian plates. Oh, I really? used the Russian Slavish plate before. Mm -hmm. What are the uh, holograms that are on your website? The full color holograms that are used uh, is that the Ultima? Some some are uh, Russians and some I see. are Ultimate. Yes. Yeah, I um, I've only seen one full color hologram, and that was many years ago. And I have not uh, had a chance to even see one in front of me. I've seen them on websites. But I, uh, I was in Montreal uh, uh -huh. many years ago. I think it was a show called Images in Time and Space, and that was the only time I've ever seen in front of me a full-color hologram. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I have, for the moment, I have a setup for doing a 20 by 25 centimeter hologram. Uh, and I, uh, I have already tested w one plate, and so... Uh, and now the, the the French plates are very good, and I hope uh, I hope I will get a very clear plate. I already had one, so I, I, I'm trying another uh, object just now. Uh, with the uh, the actual diagram and the setup that you have on your website, I see the uh, multiple laser beams passing through the beam splitters and being combined. Is there anything that you need to do to the beam intensity? What's the ratio uh, for the RGB, for the red, green, and blue? What's what's the ratio to one another that folks would be interested in hearing about? Well, it's dependent on if I use the dial laser or the uh, or the helium neon. I I mean I'm I've made some experiments with that, and um, uh, but. Uh, the the balance is merely nearly thirty three thirty three thirty three for the moment. That oh, is okay. the, the 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 dice in in the plate is they are optimized for that. So oh, that that's very clever. So the dies in the plates are optimized so that you use the same amount of power about, for about the same. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I mean, there is a difference uh, between the red uh, diode laser and helium neon laser. Yeah, the wavelength difference. Yeah, I think it's six three six hundred thirty eight. I see. I see. So you'd be closer to that with the Heaney than you would the diode. But I mean, the no, no, no. I mean, the diode laser is six hundred thirty eight. Oh, I see. Okay. But I don't know exactly where is the more optimum. And in fact, I mean, to compensate sometimes for the coherence loss, <laughs> I have to, uh, I have to uh, uh, change the ratios. I see. 
So, I mean, the background will not be, uh, you can see maybe in some uh, uh, holograms there is a green-blue background because the the coherence length doesn't, uh, uh, I mean, the, the coherence doesn't reach the back. In the Isn't that interesting? I'll have to go back on there and, and, and take a look at that. That's interesting. Well, it's, uh, I mean, but if I have, a, I, I, I made this, uh, spring I made one with a dial laser when there was no mode hop in it and then I uh, the, the background was white I see white. yes but when I make larger holograms uh, I think uh, it's more important that uh, that I have a good coherence length that is why I try to get the dial laser working well, let's say you're doing an 8x10 plate. Um, what's your exposure time running for an 8x10 plate on your system? Is 8x10 is eight by, no, eight by inches? Uh, well, let's say 30 by 40 centimeter or so. I've had some plates uh, that size, but they only 20 by 25. Okay. Uh, the exposure time? Uh, well... Something like th three minutes or so. Okay. In total. I I have a. Sp uh, have you seen? Uh, I have an, uh, a paper on the. I think you were in the uh, conference in. Uh, weren't you in uh, Austria? No. Okay. No. no. Uh, I can send you uh, the, exp uh, the the paper on the setup. Oh, okay. Did you have some holograms in there? In, uh, the, in the conference, did you provide a paper and a few? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed the uh, holograms and and uh, presented the setup. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I've been to the website of the the last conference, but uh, and I've maybe, I've seen maybe you can get directly that uh, the digital version of. Yeah, yeah. I think I may have it bookmarked somewhere. I don't remember a downloadable document on it though. If you want to send them to me, I'd, I'd be happy to receive that and look look through that. Uh, I, and if I you can. want to, I can include it on the web page with this show, so other folks can download it too. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. send yeah, send that to me, and I'll put that up with the uh, yeah, yeah. with the show when it goes up. Uh, probably about two weeks, I guess, we'll go up with this. Mm -hmm. So, how many students do you have in your class typically there? I mean, we we make we we have eight students. And they make uh, eight holograms in four hours. Wow. Yeah, you, it's, <laughs> I mean, this is, <laughs> they, I mean, this is part of half the time they use for the, the uh, color holograms. And, and half the time they study already made holograms. So, I see. So they get their own holograms. And so, they can put up the tome. Well, that sounds like a great class. I don't think uh, we have anything like that here. No, no, I, probably not. I, you know, I haven't heard. No. Yeah, I know. I know some colleges that are just uh, setting stuff up with laser pointers, uh, let alone the type of uh, setup that you have. Although there's a couple high schools actually uh, that have some great labs. Uh, there's one in Florida, Jacksonville. Uh, Florida, which is Inglewood High School, they have a great holography lab for kids. But of course, they're not doing full color work. But uh, it's a beautiful setup. But you have a color lab uh, or a holographic lab for kids too. Yeah, I I, I bring students in yeah. to uh, do holographic workshops here. Sure. Yeah. yeah, it's not too busy in the summertime like it is in the uh, the school season when kids are uh, working on science fair projects and things like that. But it's it's nothing as complex as. Uh, doing color work. I mean, a lot of them are middle school students and high school students, and we come in and uh, do the setup and just do a simple, you know, either single beam or split beam hologram, depending on their project. Yeah, okay. In fact, I'm, for the moment, I'm just sitting at the computer. I was working on, I'm working with digital holography, too. Oh, that's interesting. Tell us yeah. a little about that. And for the moment... I, I tried a very long time to get a, the image, and it just appeared on the <laughs> on the computer here. So, how now you'll take that uh, 
You'll take that digital data, and what will you do with that? Uh, well, we we have a project. We try to make a digital microscope. In fact, uh, we have a, a digital camera, and uh, uh, we are studying face. I mean, with holography, that you you get the information, the face information also, mm-hmm. and that that information is very important. In you can uh, measure. Uh, differences in in uh, refractive index and so on. So I see. So you're not ge- you're not actually generating a hologram from that data yet. And uh, well, I, I I can. Well, what what uh, you know about digital holography? Or have you? I wouldn't say I'm an expert on it, but I'm familiar with it. Yeah, so. yeah. So uh, in fact, we we just um, put a screen. A virtual screen in the field, and we we can change the position of this screen mm-hmm. and see where the image is focused. I see. And so, uh, and also you you get the, the face information from the hologram. I see. I see. And this which is, is a, important. This is all part of your students' projects, or is this a personal project of your own? Well, we. We uh, are running, in, in a way, a company. Uh, we're I starting see. a company on it. Oh, really? What's yeah. What's the name? What's going to be the name of the company? The, the name is uh, uh, Phi. Uh, I don't Phi Company. Okay. P P H I. Okay. Face holographic imaging. Great. Yeah. Great. And what will the final product be that you'll be manufacturing and providing? Yeah, we we have a prototype of a, a digital uh, microscope. I see. I see. For the moment, so mm-hmm. we we will we continue. We have the first version of it. And it ties into holography. The, there's a hologram involved, which is an optical element. No, there is no optical element. It's okay. A, it's a CCD. I see. Okay. So, uh, so we we have uh, just just we record the interference field between uh, the reference beam and the object field. I see, and then that's captured on the CCD. Yeah, and then we reconstruct it in. Uh, in a digital form. So. Wow, what's what's the resolution of that CCD? Uh, it's um, well, <laughs> yeah. the The resolution is something like uh, ten microns. Only. Wow! But um, you can uh, uh, you can oversample, and so you can get finer details. I see. I see. That's incredible. Well, you have a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah. <laughs> so for the moment, we we also I I have had a student working on on uh, holography, uh, inline holography with a, a terawatt laser. They make um, uh, you can get over tunes of the fundamental. So we, he has made some uh, pictures with 40 nanometer light. Wow. Coherent light mm-hmm. generated in, in the laser. You're saying this is a terawatt laser? Yeah, that's, that's because the, the pulses are very short, some yeah. 150 seconds. So. Yeah, wow, that's absolutely incredible. And what what would be a technical application for that? Well, for the moment, we are just studying the principles and see what what is possible. What's possible to do? Yeah. Yeah. Worry about the applications later on. Just get the yeah. results right first. Yeah, we. Yeah. <laughs> There's always something to do with something. Yeah, well, we hope. Uh, I mean, you you go into interesting uh, wavelength regions. Oh. Mm-hmm. So uh, we hope in the future. Well, Sven, 
minutes. Is there anything you'd like to add to the interview before we close it out? What would you like to say if you had a chance to say? There's going to be a lot of people listening to you. Okay, I, I, I would like a lot of people to come here and do some color hologram. Okay, and how would they go about doing that? <laughs> I don't I don't know for the moment. I will <laughs> find out. <laughs> uh, I guess the first step would be for them to contact you, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I will have a, a link to your uh, website on the Whole Talk page. And yeah. if you send that document to me, I'll also include that document as a download. Yeah, okay. And if anybody would like to do color holography, now would they have to actually attend the university in order to do color holography? Yeah, I, w- I will find out a, a way to... I think if if I get a lot of people interested in it, maybe we can uh, arrange an international course. That would be very nice. That would be very nice. Once again, I... Okay, well, well, I'm glad we finally got a chance to speak to one another. Yes. And, it was uh, very nice talking with you. It's very nice talking with you. It's very beautiful work that you're doing. I wish, uh, I wish I could have more experience with color holography or even just see one. Because it's been so many years, I, I'd love to see one in front of me, because I imagine they must be breathtaking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the, the, the color, uh, I mean, the plates that Eve makes are very clear. And that uh, that's very, I mean, you, you, you think the object is just behind in yeah. full color. <laughs> Which which was the whole point of holography, really? I mean, we see a monochrome image. Uh, yeah. You sort you you certainly do get that sense, and of course, if you, of course, we have uh, pseudo color as well, which, mm. if if done properly, can give you a, a very much a sense mm. of uh, color within the image. But I imagine true color holography must be mind-boggling. I remember yeah. seeing one. I think it was a Japanese hologram that I saw in uh, Montreal when I was there, and it just um, I just could not believe it. Yeah, I, I, I have a, a nice setup to, to do pseudo-color holograms, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think there, there is one hologram or so which is pseudo-color in the, on the website. Yeah, do you sell any of the holograms? Uh, no, uh, that uh, I ha- I haven't I, I haven't uh, done if, that. If someone went to your website and they wanted to buy one of those color holograms, would you sell it to them? Uh, well, it's possible, maybe yes. Yeah, if the price was right, I guess right. Yeah. Well, I I mean, most of the holograms you I don't have more than some few. Yeah, just one or two, I guess. Yeah, same uh, with me. So so uh, we also have had some some. Uh, Exhibitions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we you have a group here that uh, is interested in holography, and sometimes we we uh, decide to make an exhibitions. And so yeah, that's uh, yeah. If you sell the holograms, you wouldn't be able to do the exhibitions. No, because you wouldn't have problem. them anymore. Okay. Well, I want to thank you, Sven. It's been very nice talking with you. Yeah. And I want to wish you uh, a nice weekend. I guess your weekend's getting started. Mine is still have some time before I start mine. It's yeah. only one in the afternoon here. But it okay. was very nice talking with you and uh, look forward to having your show up. And I'm sure the listeners are going to enjoy it as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very nice to, to speak with you. Very nice. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, too. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.